<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Big Top. Today is Comment Force number 15, and it's a show unlike any other. The skies have opened, the stars have been revealed, and here we are. I'm Zach from Switch Force. Jake and Gabe are my ring masters. In concert today, we'll be playing a concerto of your comments, your thoughts, your opinions, and your questions, and it will be an experience like you've never seen before. You almost How was your week? You almost said a word in Spanish. You said concerto. Uh, concert in Spanish is concierto. So, so close enough. We were just Gabe, talking Gabe, about Gabe, how Spanish. do you say switch force in Spanish? Switch force. <laughs> That's not very exciting. No, it's not. Does anyone else have any uh, any other Switch Force uh, translations for I'm us? I'm still recovering from Thumper, just so <laughs> you know. My brain is not in the same place it was. I don't think it'll ever be in the same place it was. But You know yeah, the only that... thing that can cure you, right? What? Peter Bald! All right, let's get to the comments. <laughs> uh, we want, we're, we're really pushing for Jake to get his own cat, because I feel like that would add a lot to the whole Switch Force <laughs> vibe if we had a, a, th a th third and a half co-host, which was Jake's cat named Peter Bald. Who happens yeah. to be a Peter Bald. Look that up, guys, and let us know what you think of that breed of cat in the comments. In the meantime, thank you so much for all your comments, all of your communityism. We love it. We love reading what you guys have to say. We love talking about it here on Comment Force, and we just plain old love you. And that begins with a little Eli Eby, who says, Okay, guys, Waluigi has been around since Mario Tennis for the N64, but he's never had his own game. What kind of game should Waluigi have? I think for me, I'd like to see Waluigi and Wii Fit Trainer team up for Waluigi Fit. <laughs> they have the same body. Ish. I mean, I feel like Waluigi's chin is more momentous. Well, I said the same body, not same face. Ah. Uh, are heads not part of the body? Not part of my body. Interesting. Very interesting. I, I, I like this comment a lot because I have been pushing for this since the since the beginning of Switch. I really think that a Wario and Waluigi game would do gangbusters. You know, they had the Wario titles uh, in the past, Wario Land, and, uh, you know, they, they those were fun. I, I really enjoyed those all the way up through GameCube. And then WarioWare was a fantastically successful series, at least from a quality standpoint and a fun standpoint. So I think this is like the untapped treasure trove of Nintendo's lore is Wario and Waluigi teaming up for a crime heist title. I yeah, think... I, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Hmm. Waluigi in his own game. It has to be something like. Uh, no, I got it. it I, don't basically... it, I don't want it to be mini game related though. I want it to be like a story driven. No, it would epic just be adventure. Thumper, but Waluigi <laughs> on riding on top of the beetle. No, 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 no. No, uh, we've talked about horror games on on, on the Switch. I, I feel like Waluigi could be the star of his own horror game. What if? What if or instead like, of Waluigi we'll later? Like... Owning a hotel, oh. like it's like it's like a micromanaging game, and he has like a yes. weird like res beach resort, Waluigi's beach resort, and like just things keep going wrong because it's Waluigi, and you have to like keep mending them and like keeping the customers happy, but like literally like disasters just happen constantly. Like the volcano erupts and like wipes out your like golf course, and like just stuff like a tidal wave comes and ruins the beach setup. It's a chance for Nintendo to expand into a whole new genre, or like what if instead of Luigi's Mansion Three, they did Waluigi's Mansion. Waluigi's basement is more like it. <laughs> <laughs> or like Waluigi World, he builds a theme park and yeah, everything goes it's like wrong, roller coaster so tycoon, he has but... to like go into hiding and run away. Either way, please make a Waluigi game. If not, Gabe, as a game developer, we're gonna have you do it. Jake, be the voice of your fan club. Alright. So, Jake's fan club says, <laughs> with a proper picture, born from the ashes of Death Mountain, Jake's fan club will rise against all who oppose him. We will threaten to scratch Zack's switch with a broken dock, use a toad plushie to stall Gabe, and then the golden Joy-Cons will be ours, our, our precious. I don't know how I feel about the ending, but I appreciate the rest of it. And Zack, I will not scratch your Joy-Con. That's just pure rude. Gabe, I will throw toad plushies at you, though. <laughs> Jake's fan club. Again, another one with a real picture of my face. Hey, we are the first Jake's fan club. Now I'm just confused, but I like that I have two fan clubs. I have the cartoon version of me and the real version of me What's, repping it's, myself. It's two small fan clubs as opposed to the one big one like I have. So y you have some division over there. I think you got to get your fan clubs in order before you can even attempt to come at the, my throne. So good luck with that. No, I'm just glad they know who I am at this point. Well, yeah. The process of elimination. Yes. <laughs> I just like that you have two Jake's fan clubs that are battling to know who's the real Jake's fan club. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. And more concerning is the fact that I don't have a Zach's fan club. <laughs> you don't need one. 
All right. No, Brand- no fan club. <laughs> Brandon Everett says, hey, Switch Force, I just wanted to say thank you so much. Thank you for giving me things to look forward to every day. This channel has really helped me get through some tough times, and it's been fun watching all your videos to the point where I check like every 10 minutes for new stuff. I really love what you guys do and hope that you continue to do so for a long while. So once again, from, my bo- from the bottom of my heart, thank you. No, Brandon, thank you. I thought this was a really sweet comment, and I'm glad that our videos were able to, you know, help you out. And it's great that uh, you are getting through the tough times, and I think all of us here on Switch Force have had tough times. I've had a crap ton of just weird anxiety and stuff lately, so I feel for you, whatever <laughs> been, you're going it's through. It's been a weird week. <laughs> it's been a real weird week. Uh, so, yeah, so everyone goes through this stuff, and we're glad that our videos are able to help you out a little bit. And, and they actually help us out a little bit, too. Being able to record stuff like this together is, is definitely – uh, one of the highlights of our of our lives. So, yeah, uh, uh, I'm glad um, you feel the also, same. Also, sorry to disappoint you, but we do not upload videos every 10 minutes, so you can cool down on that a little bit. But uh, we'll try our best to keep momentum going for you, Brandon. Thank you. A Kane thirteen thirteen says, "Sometimes I'd like to actually see you guys talking on camera because I'd imagine you make some interesting facial expressions for some comments." And this is something we've discussed for a while, so I just wanted to throw it in here. How do you guys feel about comment force? with webcams it's something we've wanted to do and thought about doing uh, but i just figured i'd throw this out here because because we've all talked about it and we, i think it is something we, we'd like to incorporate it. well we've done videos on camera before you just gotta like way way back way before the switch yeah i mean i mean the channel's not that old so like i don't know like way way back is, is, is probably not the correct term but yeah we've done it's like four or five years huh <laughs> four or five years ago when we did face cam <laughs> what are you talking about okay four or five months yeah Either way, let us know if you have any uh, thoughts on this. Otherwise, we may just try to – we may just surprise you. We may pick a number and just give you give you our faces and see if that uh, elevates Comment Force to another level. All In right. In the meantime, Jake. Megan Quahane. Quahane? Q, 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 yep. I have so many great Nintendo memories. I am the youngest of three girls, and our first Nintendo console was the NES. <laughs> SNES, excuse me. Being the youngest, naturally I got to watch and be the little cheerleader as my two older sisters played Mario Kart and Super Mario, and one of our favorites, Clue. But I used to go in my sister's room when they were off doing other things, and i turn on Mario Kart and pick two-player and make my kitty, named Kitty Bud, <laughs> be my second player by propping up his paws on the buttons. <laughs> Jake, this can be you and Peter Ball. I'm just glad <laughs> as we got older, our love for games, especially Nintendo, only grew, and now we get together with our 3DSs and can all play together, lol. This sounds kind of like our family, and it also sounds like the conversation we were having right before we started recording where I get this very sophisticated cat named Peter Ball, and now I'm going to just have me playing Switch with me. But I really like this this memory. This is a, it, it sounds a lot like ours, um, except our family is a little bit, our brotherly trio is a little bit more spread out. Um, but that is that is a very great comment. It made me laugh. And I'm very intrigued that you had Mario Kart and Super Mario World, but then Clue was like one of your favorites. It's a very interesting <laughs> throw into the mix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that third spot, uh, the third part of that Triforce is unique. But uh, just to give you some context, um, we actually were lucky enough to get exclusive uh, access and, and the first ever shirts from the Uniqlo and Nintendo uh, clothing line collaboration where they had this big contest, 16,000 entries. Miyamoto picked the winners, and then they asked us to sort of uh, wear them and show them off. So we got the shirts, got to show them off. There's a video there, and uh, if you go and leave a Nintendo memory, you can enter to win um, my favorite shirt from the video. So definitely check that out. It was uploaded on... Thursday evening, um, and yeah, if you leave a Nintendo memory, um, you can be entered to win one of the awesome shirts, which are now available, and they're actually really soft. I was worried, like, genuinely nervous when they asked us to do this, like, what if the shirts are really uncomfortable and really gross, but to my pleasant surprise, they're actually really comfy, and I'm incredibly picky, so thank you, Megan. I like your memory, and I like that she, like, snuck into her sister's room. I wonder if Noah's ever done that. Doubtful, but I'm I just like, and then she didn't play single player. She wanted to play like multiplayer so <laughs> desperately that she decided that to prop up her kitty. Yeah, kitty Noah, bud. Noah and Very I cool. snuck into Jake's room um, last time I was there, and uh, we did some malfeasance. So Jake mm. just never knew about it. You're not a law official, so malfeasance doesn't really make sense <laughs> for you to say. Zelda Need says, uh, "Can Gabe, Jake, and Zach just have little biffs of their own, opening their mouth when they speak? I wish <laughs> that would be really cool. If we had our own wait, 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 wait. What? Do you think this is little biffs, or do you think this is little beefs? No, it's definitely biffs. Oh, okay. Huh. 
Either well, way, it's an interesting thought. I was hoping to have a little beef. No, I'm, with that, you guys. I'm pretty you sure he's talking about little biff. I, I, the comment comes from an R video, so. Okay, so little biffs when we open our mouths? Yeah. Right? Well, what, Gabe, what, what would your biff sound like? What color would your biff be? My, my, biff, question. Would like, my biff would sound like this. I don't know why, that's but that's what he would terrifying. sound like. Gabe's biff is so hyper. Yeah, super hyper. Jake, what would your biff sound like? Probably just sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Man, yeah. I'm the only creative one that gave Biff a, a new voice. No, but see, but my, my Biff would be really cool because he'd be like teal and purple. Mm. No, my Biff would be like, salmon, salmon, yellow manila, give me all of your spadilla. Okay. Wow. That's basically what my Biff would be like. Mm, okay. Great Scott. Very nice. <laughs> Great Scott. This very, very rugged and uh, rolly <laughs> seal. Seal? Says, uh... The fact that Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2 is delayed on Switch sucks, but as long as it's, say, a week or so, and not a whole freaking month or more, I'll wait. I'm honestly just happy this game is coming at all on Switch, as I love the original Lego Marvel Super Heroes game, and would preferably want to play it on the go, regardless of a slight and potential graphics downgrade. I was bummed to find out Marvel vs. Capcom isn't coming to Switch, but that's a race from my mind now that this is coming, although it's still like NBC, as I don't understand why Ultra Street Fighter 2 can come to Switch, but not NBC. Uh, well, that, that, lit, that last point is a, a different story, but talking about, you know, like, is it a problem having some of these multi-platform delays? And people seem like kind of split. Some people are like, waiting doesn't matter. Some people are like, yeah, it definitely sucks. Um, but I'm wondering how widespread it's going to be and if it'll become a, a more, you know, a, a more blanket issue. I more have a problem with the word delayed. Like, this isn't delayed. It just has a different date. Like, to me, that's not a delay. Um, look, at, I mean, we don't talk about other video games here, apparently, but Destiny, a PC, the PC version is coming a little bit later. So, you know, it, it's something that happens from time to time. Uh, and like great Scott says here, as long as it's not like, you know, six months later, like if it's a few weeks later, I, I'm pretty sure it'll be fine. People can wait a little bit. Um, oh, they, they totally can. I just think if you're looking to make some inroads for people that have another console or for people that aren't just like solely Switch owners, or solely Nintendo fans, it's really important to have these things day and date. Yeah. But then you run the risk of having a gimped day and date version. Look look at NBA Playgrounds, and that, that's a much smaller game and maybe a bad example. But that game doesn't have online on, on Switch till this day. And the other platform... I just feel like that's a bad excuse. That, that's like saying, like, oh, we couldn't get the Xbox One version done because it's, it's going to be gimped. Like, if you set a date, hit it. And, and maybe this will all you know, smooth out after a year of Switch, but this wasn't an issue for the first year of PS4 and Xbox One. So, to, like, say, like, Yeah, well, because oh. there's, there's parity there, obviously. Yeah, like, but the, the, even with the, the Destiny 2 thing on PC, I feel like it's, like, giving way too much benefit of the doubt, saying, like, oh, there's no way they could get it done. They're just trying to make no, it better. No, well, well, no, that that one, there's, there's more reasons why they're doing that other than, hey, they can say, hey, we want to make it great on PC. Like, they can say that all they want. That's probably not the actual reason why that's happening. Mm -hmm. So, but that's not the case with Switch. I don't think people are expecting anyone to double dip on, on Lego no. Mar Marvel Super. No, I, I just feel like how many Lego games has Traveler Tales and, and Lego put out, and Warner Brothers put out? Like they they just put they just put one out on Switch that that wasn't super well optimized. So maybe they, they but had... but it was day and yeah, I, I guess so. Looking what seven months into the future, they're predicting that they're going to need extra time for the, like that's the part that weirds me out. I could see if this was announced like, hey, it's November first, and we're not going to make the November whatever it is seventeenth release date, but seven months in advance. What I, I mean, maybe they haven't even started working on the Switch version. Like we don't know. Yeah. So like, I, I'm sure they're still just trying. I to... just hope it doesn't become a pattern. I hope it, it's not something that we have to regularly combat. Like that. Oh, the the Switch version is separate from the other releases. I, I think it'll all get fixed eventually once developers are way more comfortable with the Switch. And it, it's super easy to develop for but by all accounts. So I do think it's something that works itself out. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll see. All right, Jake, take us to a comment that is made just for you. Yum Pancake Games says, hashtag comment force. We need Luigi's Mansion 3 with four-person co-op and more modes. Maybe some mini games. I want it to be a sort of mixed version of Luigi's Mansion 1 and Dark Moon in terms of exploration. A hub section like an area would be nice. Please add anything you see would make a good Luigi's Mansion 3 as it would be my dream. I think that's an interesting take as like, what if they just didn't do like 
Mario Party on the Switch, and they just did a bunch of these, like, games that had, like, more mini-game type things, like ARMS with its modes, or, like, Luigi's Mansion with more modes. But I definitely want Luigi's Mansion 3 on Switch. I love that game. It's one of the first games I beat all the way through by myself completely. So I am all about a brand new Luigi's Mansion with lots of exploration and lots of suspenseful doorknob turning. Did you play Dark Moon? I did not, because I don't have a 3DS. Uh, 3DS, yeah. Okay. I guess that's a no. I played it. It's really good. You know, I, I wonder, like, what could they do to sort of up the ante? And Yum Pancake, you know, is suggesting co-op. And, and that could be interesting. Like, Luigi, Mario, Waluigi, and Wario all kind of, like, tag team ghost hunting for more of, like, a, a you know mini game or party game style. I don't, I, that could be interesting. Like, they, to have... they had the, the Ghostbusters-like mode on 3DS, didn't they? Um, or am I imagining something? I think you're thinking of the Nintendo Land game, the Wii U Nintendo Land, like, Luigi's Mansion game. Oh, okay, that might be it. Okay. Which, like, yeah, you could kind of expand on that and, you know, build that into a fully-fledged Luigi's Mansion. Um, I do feel like if there is a Luigi's Mansion 3, it's going to be a single-player game. Um, but I do... Dark Moon did expand on things in a lot of a lot of interesting ways, so they probably could just kind of build it out and make it more unique. That, that mechanic of vacuuming stuff is just still a unique, fun mechanic. So I, I'd love to see this, and I think that Luigi's Mansion 3, like... I feel like it's is likely too strong of a word to say. Like at some point we get it because Dark Moon sold really well. I'm all for it. It's coming. E3 announcement. I don't even care. Just make it happen. No, it's not gonna be E3 announcement. But I, I don't even care how long I have to wait. I just want it for childhood memories and for the amazingness that is Luigi's Mansion. I think it's one of their most like unique IPs. Like they took yeah. a character that's been around for decades and then like revamped him into this whole new world. Or Waluigi's Mansion. Nope. Okay. Speaking of Luigi, Luigi two two zero slash YTB says, "Who wants different colored docks?" I do. A lot of people apparently. This is the most liked or one of the most liked comments on the uh, on the video, and it's very interesting that like we've talked so much about pro controllers, different color switch, but yeah, what if the dock was the way that they kind of differentiated things? They can do some like really really cool stuff. Like, there's obviously more real estate on the dock than there are on the controllers. Um, I like what they are doing with the Splatoon Pro controller. So imagine something like that just on a little bit bigger scale on the dock. I think that could be like super super interesting. Uh, Mario Odyssey's coming, so like even something as simple as just like a red dock with like a hat like thing on it, like mm -hmm. it, it could be pretty sweet. Yeah, it's kind of a way for them to like do custom consoles without without interfering with their Joy-Con thing because that that's sort of the issue right you can't really do a custom switch it's basically either do custom joy con or a custom pro controller but a custom dock would allow more of like a a home console modification to the switch i think i think that's cool i don't know if they'll ever do it especially with the price they tried to charge for the individual docks um but it could be cool the mad hatter 04 coming in with the squid pun says you've got to be squidding me splatoon 2 single player trailer and the, just like the resurgence of Callie and Marie and all that has made people uh, very punny around Splatoon. And there were a ton of them. Uh, like there's eel puns. Yeah, there's there was the four, four eel was on a lot of our videos. And like people are like, oh, God, it's going to become a meme now. Four eel. Yeah, like I, I love that Splatoon is so tapped into like modern culture. I think it's very interesting. Like Nintendo's way of sort of infiltrating like social media seems to be via Splatoon, which is it's it, – to, like it, it's such a weird concept like these squid kids in this shooter is what they use to sort of be like very on the nose and very hip well they're they're using something else as well but we won't get into that people know what it is um th there is a pattern of what nintendo is doing <laughs> to, to, with these memes um but yeah i'm excited like that trailer got me so so excited for splatoon 2 by the way yeah it looks fantastic and uh, i'm excited for you two uh to one get good and two play a single player yeah. I thought they said you too, but you said you too. Gotcha. All right. <laughs> next next comment comes from DDG Master. This is specifically to you, I guess, Zach. Hey, Zach. Probably my favorite Nintendo memory was on the SNES. Currently, I am 16 years old, but back... But back she back then I was probably five or six. I remember my first memories of playing the SNES. My dad has had it for years back in the early 90s. But that was when I first understood how to actually play the game and not press random buttons. But anyways, after a few years of getting good at Super Mario World and a link to the past, also Donkey Kong, Kirby's Avalanche, etc. Aval Kirby's Avalanche? Is that a game adventure. or is that Kirby's Adventure? adventure. Okay. 
That's what I thought. My sister broke the controller, so the poor SNES was set aside and collected dust for years. Finally, one day, I was probably 12-ish, went into the living room to watch TV, but I heard some glorious music. Lo and behold, it was my dad playing Super Mario World on the SNES again. I was so excited, I almost started crying. It turns out he bought a controller off eBay, and now to this day, I am still playing the great games on the SNES. Thanks for your time. Hope you have a great day, Christian. See, I love how he says, like, finally one day when I was 12, like, that was just, like, four years ago. <laughs> So this is like super cool that like they have like this SNES like resurgence like going on in in their life. SNES like, has some fantastic games on it. Yeah, Secret of Evermore. I'm gonna, Racers. I'm gonna mention that game every every chance I get. Secret of Evermore is great. <laughs> I'm gonna mention Union Racers every chance I get because it's it's a thumb burner. Mm. Yes, it is. Which is the best kind of best kind of game? Uh, no, this is another comment from the uh, Nintendo Memories on the uh, the T-shirt giveaway video, and yeah, I, I like that. Like his dad, like almost like Legend of Zelda, like he like hears something in the room and then like da na 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 na, na and then he opens the door and it's like da na na na, <laughs> like new SNES controller. Very I just cool. think his Thanks dad didn't tell him. Like funny. It, his oh, dad sorry, just wanted to keep it for himself. Like his dad wasn't like, hey son, I bought a new controller so we can oh, play. It's actually like, a nefarious nah, sure story. Yeah. And then his yeah. his dad walked in, and then his like he walked in accidentally. And his dad was like, crap, now I have to share. <laughs> Zach, just a little behind the scenes stuff for 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 people. Um, I pitched this this exact idea to you like weeks ago. Where like we would at, like have people send in their like Nintendo memories. This is before we knew about the Uniqlo thing at all. Mm. Do you remember that? No, I told. Yeah. Actually, yes. Actually, yes, I do. I, I kind of remember you saying something about it. I, I told I told you this exact thing. I said, well, we can have like people comment like you know their favorite like Nintendo memories, and we can like talk about those. So this is this thing I pitched to you like weeks ago. It, maybe that's maybe it like in, infected my mind, and that's why I asked people to give their favorite Nintendo memories. Oh, you asked. Her, I thought Uniqlo asked. Okay. No, no, no. Or Uniqlo. I'm sorry if I keep mispr- mispronouncing it. Yeah, okay, so whatever. You stole my idea for a series and you... I per- subconsciously stole your idea, then consciously forgot about it so that I could still subconsciously feel good. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, so my turn. The Gold Miner. I think it could be a card-based RPG game, similar to Hearthstone or Gwent, using all the characters, all variants of, uh, variations of Link, Zelda, and Ganon's, all the enemies, final bosses... Um, like I got, I might pronounce Girahim, Girahim and Vadi, uh, weapons and magic from Zelda history as a cards. Uh, this is in reference to um, the Zelda mobile game that that is going to be coming soon. So a card game. I don't, I don't know that that's what I want. Really, that's your response to me. This is like gold. I would love to have Nintendo's take on Hearthstone and and doing it with Zelda and getting to see like all the weapons, all the enemies, all the bosses, all the heroes. Like I think it is. I think this is a perfect idea, Gold Miner. I think you have, you have dug up gold. You've hit it big. You can retire. <laughs> what well, my, my my thing is like, I already have Hearthstone. Okay. So why do I want a Zelda version of Hearthstone? Like, well, it wouldn't it, just be a skin game. It would be like their their own sort of variation of a card game, sort of like Hearthstone. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess it could be cool. It's just that. That's probably not what I was expecting from a mobile Zelda Gabe is game. very touchy about anything Zelda. It's like <laughs> what, either what you, he loves what, it or he absolutely hates it. What do you think that they're going to do, Gabe? Well, luckily, I'm, 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 I don't need to have that mind. Like, <laughs> I but, don't... but what what would you like then for, for Zelda Mobile? Given that there's not going to be traditional controls and given their past mobile titles in Pokemon Go, Mario Run, what, what Fire Emblem Heroes, <sighs> what would you want? I'll, I'll tell you what I think it's going to be. And you know, if it's a card game, sure, it's probably a better idea than mine. But I figured it was going to be more like a, a, a world-building thing where you, like, populate, like, Hyrule with, like, small towns mm. and things like that. I mean, because cause there's already um, uh, Clash of Clans, things like that, where you're, like, building, like, things, something like that, mm-hmm. but, like, in Hyrule with, like, Z- uh, Zelda NPCs and, and, and things like that. That's what I figured in my mind it would be. I, I, I could obviously be wrong. Like, who knows? But that's what I thought it was. I, the card game thing didn't even enter my mind until Goldminer here said it. So, I mean, I suppose it could be cool. It's just that I don't want Zelda on mobile at all. That's the problem. <laughs> well, I don't think it's going to be a traditional Zelda. I saw some people no, in the comments no, say, like, no oh, maybe they do something, like, you know, sort of akin to the, the, the DS titles where yeah, it's well, stylus based. Do, but like, I don't even think of that. Style. They, but I, but I still think that's too complicated and not what they're going for. No, no, of course not. But they could. Like, everything that that – that made spirit tracks playable you can do on a phone yeah but i don't feel i don't feel like nintendo is going to risk the like a mainline style zelda on mobile i feel like 
you know, it's either going to be something akin to Fire Emblem Heroes. A lot of people are like, oh, I hope it's like a gotcha style game where we get to collect figures and stuff. Personally, I don't really like Fire Emblem Heroes. Um, or something more akin to what you said, Gabe, like a world builder. But do remember that Animal Crossing is still hitting mobile. And I feel like that is the game that is ripe for that world building, populating towns, character style game. Yeah. So maybe I'm hoping it, that... Hey, maybe it is a card game. Who knows? Uh, Jake, do you, know. you have any thoughts? I've been thinking this whole time, so that's why I've been quiet. I'm trying to think of what I would do when I was going to, like, an archery type game or, like, a horse riding game or, like, I don't know. I mean, I definitely agree that it's going to be, like, a simplified type of game. It's not going to be a full-fledged Zelda game in any way. But I was just trying to think of what... Because I imagine that they're going to take some element of Breath of the Wild and, and implement it because that's such a big hit. They're not going to go back to, like, classic sort of Zelda theme. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. It's in- It'll be interesting to see. I'm excited for it, though. Because, like... After seeing things like, you know, Mario Run or, um, like, Plants for Zombies when that came over to mobile, like, the, the card game that they did, Plants for Zombies Heroes, is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. That was really cool. I mean, I, I know Plants for Zombies was already on mobile, but, like, that sort of iteration of a type of game. Um, so, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm just well, and, interested to see. The franchise is so ripe for it, right? Rupees replace mana and things like that. I mean, it, it just seems like it'd be such an ideal fit. And you don't have to do exactly the Hearthstone style. I read an interesting article today about, like, eight games that are you know, card games that aren't Hearthstone, and, and all of them were doing unique things, like Duelist, uh, Elder Scrolls. Oh, there's, Duelist there's some is, very interesting ones, and I think that G. it would be cool for but Nintendo I, to I get I have in one, on. one, one big hope. I hope it's not some, like, match-three puzzle game. <laughs> like, match the purple rupees, match the green rupee. Please don't do that. that, that Anything could, else, and I'll be okay. could be that. <laughs> yeah, someone was saying, what if it's, like, a Hyrule Warriors style, like, match-three, where as you match them, like... They do attacks. On, like, oh clear no, out the it's so real. But uh, oh no, please. Okay, next next comment. Get out of here, Zach. It's you. Enrique Serrano says, "Do you guys ever dislike something made by Nintendo? I mean, you are not objective. Every single thing that came out from Nintendo, you say it's awesome. It's amazing. WTF?" And I want to bring this up because, like, occasionally we do get the comment that says, "Like, <laughs> are you guys paid by Nintendo? Are you guys just like basically a Nintendo hype machine?" And the answer is a hundred percent no. In fact, there are. You're not a listening number of things, <laughs> yeah, because there are a, a bunch of things that we are either very skeptical about or end up not liking or think are you know poor decisions. Now we do try to approach things with an open mind because I think that's the best way to approach. And instead of like hating on things, we try to like give constructive criticism of like what we would rather it be as opposed to like oh. this is just awful. Right, but I I don't think that we are in the camp of the the kind of Nintendo channel or the kind of Nintendo fans that just blindly like praise everything they do. I mean. There's been some moves and some different things and some omissions and and whatnot that we're like, huh. And, and, you know, the other part of this is that, frankly, like, the Switch has been very successful thus far. So it's sort of Mm -hmm. hard to fault Breath of the Wild or fault Mario Kart 8 Deluxe or fault, you know, the Splatoon 2 Test Fire or some of their their plans because it's been pretty great. And we have made mention, like, hey, we wish Virtual Console was here. Hey, we wish that, you know, the, the UI was more flushed out. Hey, we wish that... Um, you know, some of these ports didn't have such a downgrade. Hey, we wish that, uh, you know, they... Yeah. And so, go ahead. I, I was going to say, like, I'm getting back into Nintendo because I basically took majority... Like, at the beginning of the Wii, I was there, and then I sort of fell off, and then Wii U, I really didn't touch except for, like, Skyward Sword and... Wait, was that even on Wii U or was that just Wii? That was Wii. That was Wii. Yeah, okay, so, like, I totally skipped over, like, Wii U entirely almost because there was nothing really that interests me. Um, like, I haven't played Mario Run or anything like that. I haven't played the past couple of Mario Worlds um, or 3D World. So, like, for me, this is, like, me just getting back into it. And, like we said, like, the Switch is doing really well. And everything that they're putting out has been, like, super good so far. So there's not really a lot to hate on. But, yeah, there are things that we have said that we wished was better well, or different. Well, I want to I want to give Enrique some, like, concrete examples of things we don't like. I have said very many bad things about Snake Pass. Zach, just in this video, says he doesn't like Fire Emblem Heroes. So, like, we do criticize him. We don't blindly love everything. You, people just somehow have that perception because it fits whatever narrative they want to have in their head about us. But well, I think also it's because like we make Switch videos every day, and so it seems like, man, they just talk about everything and like everything. But there are absolutely moments, and, you know, f- for example, things like, okay, initially Rhyme was going to be more expensive on Switch. We thought that was a, a terrible move. And, you know, when the Joy-Cons weren't working, uh, you know, we we assessed it with a, a level head and said like, okay, this doesn't seem to be as crazy. And when they decided that they were going to help fix them, we mentioned that, but initially we were like, okay, that's not good. And you know, go backwards. First off, Gabe and Jake did not like the pro controller at all. And yeah, now they've come around to it, but I, I feel like we approach things with 
our own unbiased perspective. I mean, frankly, we have no reason to be biased. You know, like there's no there's no sponsorship or anything of that sort, and we play everything. We're not just Nintendo gamers. I mean, I have a whole other channel where I do every other game under the sun. So, uh, yeah, I feel like I, we do. And I want to challenge Enrique to give us something that Nintendo has, like a game, specifically a game, because Nintendo does things that, that are bad every once in a while. But name the last bad Nintendo game. They don't make bad games. They really don't. Like, they might make games that might not be for you or, or, or like, games that are, like, are not as good as other Nintendo games. But I, I, I challenge anyone to, to find a badly designed Nintendo game. I don't I don't know if too many of those exist. I'm sure they do. But, you know, I, I can't. I, I can't think of one. Right. And, again, that's maybe the biggest piece of this puzzle is, like, the Switch has kind of been their most successful thing in, in years. And so it's more po- it, it's easier to be positive about something that is going positive, right? Like, the Switch is going well the games that have come out have been fun they've innovated with snipper clips and arms and their directs have been entertaining and, and full of information like they're kind of nailing it right now and the aspects that they aren't we've mentioned so moving There's on that. to shade 041 hey switch force i just wanted to start off by saying that i love all your videos each of you bring your own unique viewpoint ex- experiences about the Nintendo Switch, and I love hearing multiple opinions such as the ones you all provide. Also, your video introduction is perfect. It's not obnoxious lo- obnoxiously loud or lengthy like some other YouTubers' intro sequences. Your intro is short, simple, and sweet. As always, great video. Look forward to hearing more from you guys. Thank you. Thanks. I really like our intro, that, too. Shane. I really like when I do the cool thing and I put like a little <laughs> funny snippet before the intro and then it leads into the intro and then the rest of the video, but they don't really seem to like that, so I kind of stopped doing it, it. It's not that I don't like it. It's that I edit way more videos than you do, so it, it, like I, I don't... I don't think way more is, is an accurate description, but okay. Uh, it's, it's 100% accurate. In fighting. It's 100% accurate. <laughs> but this yeah. is the beat that they this wanted. This is more ammo for the Gabe fan club and the Jake fan, fan club to battle over. Who does more editing? Who no, I know I don't do as much, but I, he doesn't do way more. I edited like three videos yesterday. I, I, oh, sure. Whatever. You edited three videos yesterday. Fine. Um, I, I don't – I also like – and again, this isn't a shot. Like I'm not saying that you don't edit. When I edit, like they're the longer videos, so it's harder for me to like find a specific moment. I actually love the thing that you do. I wish I did it. But like for Gabe, me, maybe f- you just don't have a good good eye for humor. <laughs> well, we know. Anyways, this a, has we nothing know. to do with what the comment was. Get back. Let's get back to the comment. We know that's true, by the way. <laughs> my 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 humor meter is broken. All right. So distracted observer. Huh. I love the nuance in that name there, by the way. Um, Gabe is the resident witch expert. Uh, I ha- um, have you played either of the two witch themed games on the Switch? Uh, Dark witch music episode. Rudy Mickle. Rudy Mickle. Or Vroom in the Night Sky? If so, which one would you recommend? <laughs> no, I haven't played either one of these games. I can't even pronounce their names. I feel like you have to get some witch time on Switch time, Gabe. Okay. You, you are a witch expert. All right, Distracted Observer. Hit me back. And uh, tell me which one of these two games I should play on, and I'll make a video on them. <laughs> there we go. It'll be the witching hour with Gabe. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, G. David Har says, For ARMS, the free DLC is what really sells it for me. They didn't have to offer new characters for free. They could have made a season pass, but the goodwill that this gives the consumer makes the game so much more appealing as an investment. And it's totally true. That is one thing I feel that Splatoon did well and kept people in the loop, and ARMS is replicating. Now, you could contrast this to Zelda Breath of the Wild, where people take issue with the cost of that season pass, but I think it has mostly to do with new IP versus established IP. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say that. Yeah, and, and so it's like, okay, in order to – and look, it is a business decision. Nintendo is a business, and they're out to make money and be successful and keep making games and keep making consoles, and, and they, they rightfully should. But I think Zelda doesn't have that same MO because it's it's Zelda, whereas ARMS, like, how are we going to get people to get into ARMS? Also, I, I do feel and, – and you'll see this across the board, right? Lately on other platforms, single-player DLC – is much more likely to be charged for, whereas multiplayer DLC is more frequently given so that the player bases and the pools can stay unified. Um, So I think there's like a a number of reasons for this, but yeah, it's absolutely great that ARMS is doing this, and to announce it even before the game and say it's free, like typically DLC announcements before a game don't do many favors, like look at Evolve, but when you say like, hey, it's coming free, that just 
makes it seem like, okay, my $60 is going to go way farther beyond the, the first cartridge. And they gave specific examples, like characters and arms and stuff. They didn't just say, oh, there's going to be free updates, which could have been, like, anything or, like, new skins or something. like. But, like, those are, like... In a fighting game, that's like the biggest bulk that you like thing you could get is like new characters and new weapons. So like right. to say that like we're basically gonna be adding onto the game over time and making it that much better like is super enticing to 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 get it and play it from the beginning. Absolutely. And, and before I say this, I, I I'm not saying that I think Arm should charge her DLC, but I I wonder. Obviously, the fact that it's a new IP that that has like a lot to do with it, but Smash Brothers did DLC so well and like. It wasn't free, but it was, like, really cheap, and people still bought it. I right? wonder if it is how much that is, that new IP thing, though. Like, because everybody loves Smash Bros., so they they knew it was going to sell, and people were going to do it. Everybody loves Zelda. They knew that was going to sell and do well. And then, like, with Mario this Kart Splatoon, as well. I think Mario Kart did DLC very, very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, again, wasn't free. But, see, that then it then it's interesting, because Splatoon 2 is coming. That's no longer a new IP. What are we doing? Yeah. I feel like we'll it's see. so established, though. I, I don't feel like you can all of a sudden say, like, psych. <laughs> Pay for those maps. Yeah, probably a, a fair point. Hmm, interesting comment. Now we're on to Ro- Roko Stick, and he says, Biff, for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Smash, or an Amiibo. Or all three. Why not just all three? <laughs> oh my, Biff is a Smash character, though? I don't know yeah, what that- the heck he would do, but that'd be amazing. <laughs> He'd probably be like an assist trophy more so, but... That'd be great. I would like Biff as a Mario Kart 8 Ducks character would be fantastic because he would fit so perfectly in that little car. He's got the big head for it and the uh, the arm on top he can throw items with. He's he's basically like Midna's counterpart if you Ooh. think about it. Interesting, man. He's like a light-hearted, gold, glowy, light version of Midna with a hand on it. That's a good call. <laughs> That's a really um. interesting correlation there. But yeah, I freaking Please put Biff in Mario Kart 8. Like, then, then you don't even have to expand on his legs or anything. Just throw him in a cart and he's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's, right. a, he's just going to be like Boo, basically. Gabe, this one's for you. Isaiah King says, Twin Tell, I don't know, is like Bayonetta, hair attacks and uh, time slowdown. Yeah, kind of. A little bit. Isn't that weird? Like, everyone's, like, obsessed with her butt. She has hair attacks. She <laughs> slows time down. What if, what if Bayonetta is Twin Tell? Or what if they just capitalized on that Bayonetta did well? <laughs> and then it was like, let's just replicate what? it and make her a French <laughs> actress. Bayonetta 3 has Twintel as the lead. Ooh, how cool would that be? Or Twintel is the evil can't, villain. Except it can't be because Bayonetta or, is Bayonetta. Or, but... or, Twintel is a movie star, so she played Bayonetta. Yes. <laughs> yes. There was, a, there was a French version of Bayonetta, like a film, and Twintel was Bayonetta. I like that. I like that. That's what we're doing. Fan fiction coming next week, guys. Oh, uh, please. The, the, I'm sure the fan fiction for Twintel has already... Uh, started and i'm sure it's not pretty uh potatoes because potatoes says nintendo does gimmicks best motion controls is a big gimmick for the wii but then died hard and everyone realized it was just a gimmick however nintendo continues to integrate it well like gyro amy and splatoon and breath of the wild imagine a first party nintendo vr game i love this comment because it taps into something that i never considered yes nintendo does gimmicks but look the wii had motion control Yet Splatoon carries that forward, and Breath of the Wild carries it forward in ways that we never complain about or even really, like, acknowledge. And I think to, that's, to, that's to be clear, so perfect. To be clear, I do complain about it in Splatoon. Okay. You can, <laughs> but, but, like, it's cool that, like, two generations ago, they innovate with this motion control gimmick. People think it's kind of lame. Some, you know, people love it. Families are all about it. And then two generations later, it's incorporated in ways, like, that... That, that fit into hardcore games, right? Splatoon, a, a shooter, Breath of the Wild, this big open RPG. I, like, that That to me is like a, 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 like a mind blow moment where it's like, holy crap, they did find a way to refine motion controls. And look, ARMS is going to do the same thing. They found a way to take this beginning gimmick and integrate it into hardcore games. And maybe they really are like the master craftsmen of the era and, and maybe they could do something well, they did with like VR. 3d which is like more akin to vr than motion control i feel like and that kind of is falling off like their new yeah. handheld doesn't even have 3d in it but but 3d to me is more of like a solely visual thing whereas like vr and motion are more gameplay effective yeah i guess VR, i mean vr requires VR, v, motion. yeah vr is vr isn't gameplay effective it's still just motion like I, I feel, but like it, VR, it it greatly changes the style yeah. of the game. Yeah, I don't, I, know. I, I don't want to see Nintendo do, v, do VR personally. But then again, I don't like VR at all. So I just yeah. love this this notion that they have refined motion control and like subtly integrated into these awesome games. Yeah, that's so cool. 
Samir Ramos says, screw Gabe. They're going to kick you out soon because they are brothers. Soon they're going to announce a third twin sister. No, well, we we have a third brother, so we don't really need a twin sister. But but we could kick Gabe out and, and incorporate our third brother and make this a family affair. <laughs> yep. That can, twin that's sister. A, definitely mm, a possibility. It'd be interesting. I wonder how a sister would function in our family. It's an interesting not thought. Well. Not, not well. Not Gabe, well? I'm sorry no, that you didn't. Like you like didn't. Zach is the sister of the family. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Inside joke. No, no, it's all love. All right, Fruit Loops says, uh, "I don't expect this, uh, this to be revealed at E3, but I really want an Animal Crossing on the Switch. I feel like the portability that New Leaf had made it more accessible and fit the style of game that Animal Crossing is, uh, which is kind of a time waster game. So I think that Animal Crossing on the Switch <laughs> would be good on the go, and if you want to play at home, you can have a giant TV to play it on." Okay, before, have any of us ever played like Animal Crossing like for more than like five minutes? No, and okay. and that I've been avoiding these comments for weeks because of that fact. But we get them, and people seem to really be clamoring for it on, on Switch. So I wanted to bring it up. I just think it's hilarious that this person seems to be like pro Animal Crossing, but then they admit that it's a time wasting game. <laughs> Like, that's why I've never gotten into it, because it doesn't seem like there's enough reward for me to, like, want to sit down and play it for hours, kind of like Viva Pinata, like, that game got old fast for me, but um, I just think it's interesting that someone who seems to be very pro-Animal Crossing admits that it's just to fill Well, they're very, they're very popular, and whether it, yeah. you call it a time oh, yeah. waster or a sim or whatever you, you know, want to call it, um, like a village simulator. I'm sure uh, they're good for what they are. I feel like Animal Crossing is going to appear on Switch. I feel like that is a likely announcement this year. Um, you know, they have the mobile game, so piggybacking off of that is probably going to happen. I, I don't know enough about Animal Crossing to, like, say, like, ooh, these are specific features I'd want. But I'm willing to give it a chance, especially on Switch. Um, I'm willing to give it a shot. And I think it would be fun if we were all able to, like, make our own villages and then, like, show them off or compare them or destroy each other's. That's true. Ba- you will battle never crossing. Touch my village. You're not touching um, my village, obviously. You no, can't but... touch Cookie Dog. <laughs> I think it. I no. I don't know if the Switch is even capable of doing this, but I've said this before about Pikmin, and I say this about Animal Crossing. I think it'd be so cool if they integrated somehow, like it could detect your location, the Switch, and so like it knew like when you left the house, and like you got like new Pikmin or like new Animal Crossing stuff based on like different locations that you went to. But... Switch is not. Switch is not capable of doing that. No. Well, then update it. Dang it. It'd be awesome. And speaking of awesome innovation, Salah Al Omari says, On my dock, because it gets very hot, I've taken off the back door of the ports. I purchased a USB fan and plug it into the system. Long gooseneck USB fans are easy to get and cheap to protect your system. I then s- use the side USB ports to power the fan, and it works great. I thought this was interesting how like he is taking such good care of his Switch, and with all the recent uh, talk of like Switches getting really hot in the dock, I just wanted to bring that up as like a, a potential... Yeah, I've seen, pictures, I've seen pictures on this on like Reddit where people just plugged in a little USB fan and had it shining down or blowing down on their Switch to keep it nice and pampered. Yeah, so cool idea. Larvid comes in with the comment that says, What do you guys think about Pikmin 4 at E3? That's weird that we were just talking. I was just talking about <laughs> Pikmin at least. But anyways, uh, I think it would be cool. I, I honestly haven't... I've never beaten a Pikmin game. I've never even played it that much. The most i played is like... I played the first one a little bit and then I played... Um, multiplayer and Pikmin 3 with Yuzak, but I would love a Pikmin 4 because, again, the Switch makes everything so much more accessible, and I would love to get back into a Pikmin game. It's not that I never disliked them. Again, I just never got into one. So, I would love it. I don't care. Again, it's sort of like Luigi's Mansion. I'm not even, like, super upset if it, like, doesn't come out for a while. I would just like to see one that's well executed and has something new and unique and, and included in it. I, I, I think there's a, a good chance that it gets announced at E3. Uh, the Miyamoto has confirmed that they're working on it. Like, the game is happening. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, is it happening at E3? Who knows? I hope so. Uh, it's it, I wouldn't say it's likely, but it's definitely a possibility. Yeah, and, you know, they have Hey Pikmin, um, which is clearly not a mainline entry, uh, but it does keep the, the franchise fresh in people's minds. Um, so my thinking here is what do they do to expand on Pikmin 3? Because Pikmin 3, to me, was a phenomenal game. And I think you could just do more of that and everyone would be happy. But... I do like the thought of, like, maybe it expands into more of, like, a a bigger world. Maybe there's hub worlds, and then you can go to more unique locales. Maybe it's more involved in terms of you traveling um, around, you know, a galaxy and going to different planets. I think it would be so much fun if you could... If the levels were like, hey, this is the Mushroom Kingdom, and you're, like, a little tiny Olimar and, like, little tiny Pikmin in the Mushroom Kingdom, so you see, like, big Goombas and stuff like that. If Nintendo was able to, like, sort of merge them... I'm always for crossovers, as you know. Um, But I do make one request 
and that is bring back and expand upon the multiplayer because that was so fun in Pikmin 3. Yes, it was. That is crazy enjoyable. So, And, and it'll work perfect on the Switch. Vardal the Great says, uh, Common Force is one of the only reasons I stopped playing the Switch at all. I feel, I feel like we're doing him a service that we're giving his eyeballs and fingers a break uh, by making Comet Force. Are we giving his, his eyeballs a time? break? Because if he's watching the video, then he's still Maybe not he's bra- resting and listening. Yeah, I hope That'd he's like, listening to it, not like watching I'm it. I'm just you honored that Prince Zuko gla- uh, graced our, our video. Yes, a lot of, that's a lot of Switch time. You, you may be one of the greatest Switchers of all. Mm-hmm. And that is it for Comet Force number 15. We've gone a long ways since Comet Force 1, and we have you to thank for it. So thank you so much for always providing awesome comments, ideas, thoughts, discussion topics for us to talk about with you. It's so much fun. Favorite video of the week, and uh, we love that you guys love it as much as we love it. For now, though, we are going to whisk away into the world of Waluigi hopes and dreams. E3 is upon us. We still are going to work on that E3 uh, special comment for us. It is coming soon, so prep your predictions. Keep those memories coming on the clothing Wait, video. Wait, what if, if Pikmin 4 it takes place in Waluigi's garden? <laughs> I was going to say, what if it's in Waluigi's mansion? No, what if it's in well, his the, garden? Yeah, the garden is in the back of the And Waluigi keeps like, getting angry because like, Pikmin are destroying his plants and stuff. Smushing them? Yeah. Anyways, Cross sorry. Over. Outro. <laughs> outro. Outro. Also, I want to let you two, Gabe and Jake, know that people have been very uh, happy with our Switch Force outs lately. So we have Good. risen to the occasion, and we will continue to rise to the occasion each and every week. Stay tuned for Comet Force coming right back at you next weekend. Until that time, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed. It helps us out. Subscribe if you want to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest from Switch and us here at Switch Force. Hit the notification bell if you want to be the first to see if your comment made comment for us. And until next week, my friends, Switch Force out. <laughs>